Hello everyone and welcome back to McKegg's Movie Mayhem in association with WBBJ7 Eyewitness News. I am your host Eli McKegg and today I'm going to be doing the movie review for The Boy and the Heron. Your mother, she's awaiting your rescue. I'll be your guide. Now, The Boy and the Heron is the newest film from Studio Ghibli, the acclaimed animation studio from Japan who created popular movies such as Spirited Away, Kiki's Delivery Service, Howl's Moving Castle, etc., etc. They have a very strong record when it comes to animation films. And this is their newest edition where it is very much about a boy who had to suffer through trauma with losing his mother and now... Three years have passed and now he is, his dad has remarried and now he's trying to still deal with the grief of losing his mother. But then during all this time, he goes into this fantasy realm where herons can talk, there are tall parakeets, talking pelicans, etc, etc. And he is sort of, this is sort of a way for him to help get through the grief that he has been going through. And this was a very well made film. This was a great film. In my opinion, it was one of those movies where when I was watching it, there's a lot of animation parts where you're just thinking to yourself, man, this this looks gross. This looks, especially when they draw, this is a thing that I've noticed about Studio Ghibli. Whenever they draw older characters, like older women or such like that, they, they're little hunched over, bigger nose. They look like, cre they look like hags from like fantasy that's what they look like but at the same time it's still nice to see studio ghibli's signature style still there and it was so fun like the film in terms of the fantasy elements was so original and so creative like seeing how the heron is both an actual bird and also a fantasy character where it's like a human head is inside the heron and it pokes out of the heron's mouth but still is a part still can fly still has hair and legs it's it's so interesting to see those animation details and also when it comes to the parakeets they still look like parakeets however they're just tall like human size and very beefy like parakeets are strong in this movie and they terrified me a little bit but it was also nice to see the boy sort of having to go through an entire thing of the five stages of grief and having to save his stepmom from this world and trying to get through the pain of having lost his mother and having to come to grips with having to deal with this anguish and it's it's hard to explain because it's very this film is very much teaching him how to move on but not like fully move on to where he can still remember and love his mother but having to accept that his mother is no longer with them and knowing that, hey, it's gonna be okay, she's in a better place. And that's sort of what this film was trying to tell. And there are different bits of misadventures throughout the film where he would meet a character that he had met in the real world. It's just this, in this version, they look different and they act different. And it was so much fun and Man, look, when it comes to Studio Ghibli films, they're just so much fun because Studio Ghibli is a studio that uses their imagination to its fullest to the point where I'm constantly thinking to myself, I don't know how they could have thought of this because this is something I never would have thought of. And it's very, very fun. That's really all I can say. When it comes to the animation style though, and like the backdrops, it is beautiful. The way this film is animated is fantastic this is if animated film where if I could just buy a frame of the film I would and I would put it on my wall at home because that's how beautiful all of it is it is paint it is basically a painting and I want to have that art on my wall that's how this film made me feel about the animation the cast was very well casted as well. Um, Robert Pattinson plays the Heron, and he's doing a different character voice. He's not doing his traditional Robert Pattinson voice. And him doing a character voice is so much fun to hear. And it was something that I never expected someone like Robert Pattinson to pull out a voice like that. And it was so cool to see him and hear him do a voice like that. 
But yeah, overall, this film is very much a great way to help people get through grief and a great metaphor of, hey, it's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And you can, you're going to be okay. Like there was even a scene in the film where the boy meets someone, and I'm trying to be vague about this, meets someone that is connected to his mother that sort of helps him go through the pain that he is feeling and the grief that he is feeling and telling him like, hey, it's going to be okay. I, yeah, I can't go further into it. I can't even say a line from this character without spoiling who this character is. And I really don't want to spoil the character. But overall, I really did enjoy this film. And I think this is something that a lot of teenagers and adults will fully understand. It's hard for me to recommend this movie for kids because there are a few elements in the film that I believe would be a little bit scary for kids. So overall, I give this movie a 4 out of 5 stars and 8 out of 10. Next week, I'm going to be hopping into a world of pure imagination because next week I'm going to be doing the movie review for Wonka. But until then, I've been Eli McKegg with WBBJ7 Eyewitness News, and I hope you all remember to watch movies. Thank you.